Right, so the matter of Diane Abbott and will she or won't she be allowed to run for Labour might have pretty much just been answered, if not in so many words, and in one of the worst ways possible. Despite the general election campaign only having been underway for about a week now, the question of Abbott's ongoing suspension seemingly having lasted 13 months now without any investigation actually happening that we in the public are aware of, has been at a minimum incredibly disrespectful, but at worst completely fractional and intentional, her very safe seat perhaps being lined up for a Starmer loyalist, a right winger from the NEC maybe. But actually, as it turns out, the investigation into Diane Abbott relating to the wrong draft of a reply to a letter sent to the Observer, so completely over the top anyway, since it was an honest mistake she apologised for, was wrapped up five months ago. And yet Starmer is telling the media he's hoping it gets wrapped up soon, lying through his teeth, therefore. There seems to be room for Natalie Elphick down in Dover, but not Diane Abbott up here in London. Can you welcome Diane Abbott back to your happy fold? Well, look, Dan is um, going through a process, Nick, as you know, um, in relation to the um, investigation of uh, an issue relating to her. That's not finally resolved um, yet. But, you know, this Labour Party is a changed Labour Party. And um, when those that either represent or voted Tory say to me, um, I now feel this is a party that represents the national interest and can take our country forward, then I think that's very important. Because but but, but what do, of Diane uh, Abbott? Will, will the system be resolved prior to the election day? Uh, well, we'll have to resolve it very soon now, Nick, because I think the deadline for... Come on, Sakir, you know me well summer. enough. You know I'm going to come out. If you respond like that, you know I'm going to come again. Is, is yeah. this going to be resolved prior to election day, Sakir? It'll be resolved. Yeah, of course it will. Um, we've got a cut-off date of, I think it's the 4th of um, June um, or thereabouts. So we've got a, you know, Nick, we've got a date okay. in place. For are, a are, are you hopeful of having her back in the fold? Well, Nick, that's a process we're going through. The National Executive Committee in the end will decide that. Right. Um, but we've got a process in place and we'll complete it, well, actually, reasonably soon now. All right. Right, so that was Keir Starmer talking to Nick Ferrari on his LBC show on the 24th of May, so four days ago at time of writing, telling Ferrari that the matter of Diane Abbott and her suspension would have to be resolved by the 4th of June, that she was going through a process, that the matter she had been suspended for had not yet finally been resolved, that the National Executive Committee of the Labour Party will decide what happens in the end, but that it all has to be wrapped up quickly now. That last bit was the only honest thing he actually said there, because the rest was a barefaced lie, it seems. I'm sure you're shocked and surprised to hear that Keir Starmer is lying to the public yet again, but such are the findings of a Newsnight investigation into this overlong, blatantly factional suspension. Diane Abbott, in case you were not aware or had forgotten by now, had written to The Observer in reply to an article posted in that publication by writer Tamiwa Owaladi titled Racism in Britain is not a black and white issue, it's far more complicated. However, the wrong draft of said letter was sent to the Observer in the end, which ended up coming across as implying that Diane Abbott thought racism affecting non-white people was somehow worse than that of racism suffered by some white groups, for example the GRT community or Jewish people. It was sent in error, it was a mistake. Abbott held her hands up within hours of it being published as erroneous, apologising for the offence it clearly would have caused, as you'd expect from such a statement, as you would expect from Diane Abbott, given how it could be taken. What she meant, as was clarified by Martin Ford KC, author of the Ford Report, and himself black, explained that he clearly understood what Diane Abbott meant, and that was that the racism suffered by non-whites is as a result of their particular protected characteristic being much more obvious, as well as completely irrational, and he's right, this really ought to be obvious to anyone. Starmer, however, had Abbott suspended in a heartbeat, almost as if he couldn't believe his luck. Abbott being one of his most vocal critics across social media from within the Labour Party, she's showing far more spine in challenging Starmer's authoritarianism than anyone else in the Labour Party seemed prepared to. Abbott has, as far as we the public have been aware, been suspended ever since, still waiting 13 months on for the investigation to be concluded. Claims of an investigation being ongoing persist and indeed Starmer is just there too. Nick Ferrari repeated that himself. Except it seems it isn't true and it is a BBC Newsnight investigation that appears to have exposed Starmer's lies in no uncertain terms 
As Newsnight presenter Victoria Derbyshire has tweeted out this morning, New, I can reveal Labour's investigation into suspended MP Diane Abbott's racism comments finished five months ago. A source says she was given a formal warning in December 23. Miss Abbott was required to do an online anti-Semitism course, which she did in February, yet source says she still hasn't been told if she can stand as a Labour candidate at election. I understand veteran MP is angry, depressed and worn out by the way she feels she's been treated by Labour. Diane Abbott was suspended as a Labour MP 13 months ago after writing in The Observer that Jewish, Irish and Traveller people undoubtedly experienced prejudice, but that they were not subject to racism all their lives. She apologised at the time. The Labour leader condemned her remarks as anti-Semitic. Diane Abbott's case was presided over and decided upon by the Labour National Executive Committee last December. So Keir Starmer is a barefaced liar. They reviewed Diane Abbott's case, what she said. Her actions to that were measured up, an immediate apology and retraction, no doubt. And their action was to recommend that Abbott have a morning and complete an anti-Semitism awareness course, which she did in February just gone. That should have been an end to it. If that was the Labour NEC's recommendation and she has completed that action, then restoration of the Labour whip should have already happened. And for all we know, it has. But with Keir Starmer now lying about the truth of this matter and knowing how he abused his own executive power to keep Jeremy Corbyn suspended, despite being cleared of any anti-Semitic wrongdoing by the Labour NEC himself, is it again the case that Keir Starmer is the one keeping Abbott suspended and is he lying through his teeth to cover that up? He is the only one here lying about this after all. Why are you lying about it, Keith, if this doesn't have a ring of truth to it? This also casts new light on an allegation made by the Labour rights favourite go-to hack Lee Harpin back in March. So after the NEC had ruled on Diane Abbott's suspension and after she had completed the anti-Semitism awareness course, that she could have the whip back if she agreed to stand down at the next election. Harpin, putting this out in a now apparently deleted tweet, that my understanding of the Diane Abbott situation is a compromise deal could be reached whereby she has the whip restored at some point, while she also rules out standing again in Hackney at the election. No secret that at least four people already seeking to become candidate in that seat. Well, of course they are. It's a lovely safe seat that some Starmer shill could take and abuse, but Abbott has no intention of stepping down for Starmer, else she would have had the whip back if what Harpin said here was true, which admittedly is always a stretch in my view when it comes to him. It evaded him, it seems, though, that Abbott had already had her case heard and done as instructed. The whip should be hers again, and it is a question now as to why that isn't the case. It is also for the NEC to decide who can be candidates in the upcoming general election. Yet if Starmer is abusing executive power again to keep Abbott suspended himself, something else he would be lying about, of course, they naturally cannot do that. This is all on Keir Starmer, it seems, and Diane Abbott is fully aware of it, having tweeted out following Starmer repeating similar things he said on LBC to a Radio 4 Today programme interview. Just heard Keir Starmer on BBC Radio 4 claiming that the decision to let me back into Labour has nothing to do with him. It has everything to do with him. She is, on the face of it, absolutely right. There's no other explanation for what is going on right now, surely. And it wasn't the only gem of a statement to come from Starmer in that Radio 4 interview either, as he also said on the Today programme. It's not a question of what I want. The days when the leader of the Labour Party rolls up his or her sleeves and gets involved in disciplinary cases are well and truly over. And I bet he said it with a straight face as well. He lies like a rug. Here he is, very much it appears to be doing just that, and looks to have been caught out doing it by BBC Newsnight. Keir Starmer currently has a personal, personal rating amongst ethnically diverse communities, according to a recent poll by Ipsos Mori anyway, of minus 31. And here he is, apparently taking it upon himself and lying about it, trying to get rid of Britain's first black female MP, trying, it seems, to force her out of Parliament for no other reason, it appears, than petty factionalism. That score of his with Ipsos Mori deserves to fall through the floor as news of this stunt he appears to be pulling, he certainly appears to be lying about, spreads, and if it truly looks set to blow up in his face, except expects someone else to end up carrying the blame and carrying the can, taking the blame for it, probably one of his whips. He doesn't too, seem to ever make mistakes, you see. He certainly doesn't admit to them, always someone else's fault. 
The deadline for Labour to appoint their candidate for Hackney North of Stoke Newington, Diane Abbott's seat, is the 4th of June. That's a deadline for Diane too, therefore. She either chooses to stand as an independent, going down the same road as Jeremy Corbyn has, or be forced into retirement by Starmer, who will appoint someone else. Because at this point, it would be by Starmer. He is, after all, the only reason it seems now, based on this bombshell, that she hasn't had the whip back already. Starmer has claimed this case has had nothing to do with him. It seems to have everything to do with him. Him alone and nobody else. There's no other explanation that I can see. The NEC have done their job. So this has got to be all on Starmer and he's got to carry the can for it. He must take the blame for it. He has to hold his hands up. And he must do the right thing by a Diane Abbott, must show Labour truly is a democracy because if this is not rectified, then Labour clearly is now a dictatorship. And do we therefore really want someone like Keir Starmer to run the country, acting like this in running his own party, treating the whole country like this potentially, if given the chance? Meanwhile, if you want to learn more about the carrot being dangled before Diane Abbott over whip restoration from back in March, I dare say a particularly gnarly, wrinkly old carrot, a bit limp as it was, the full details of what amounts to blackmail can be found on this video recommendation here. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.